And if this would have been in mint perfect condition, some of these go for over a thousand dollars. Three, two, one. Hey, Polo Buddies. Thanks for watching. All right. In this video, we are going to talk about my big money bolos, items that I sold on eBay for big money. I'm going to tell you where I got it, what I paid for it, and what it sold for. These are items that I sold for $35 or more. So a lot of items I did take best offers on. So what you see on the screen may not reflect what the item actually sold for, but I'm going to tell you what it sold for. So the first item is this vintage 1995 Mimi DN frog gold tone statement belt buckle. Hard to find. This is actually a piece that my husband picked up. I think it was in like a lot of things that he picked up and he handed it to me. So I put it on eBay. It has been listed a little while. Um, he had about 50 cents in it, I think. And it sold for $50 best offer and the buyer paid shipping. They were all in for $56.65 for this cool frog belt buckle from 1995. These are vintage lot of hair. Lot of five hair clip barrettes, stay tight, rectangle, unmarked. Now, these are two and a half inch and three inch. If you can find the Goody brand, which I don't know if anybody is like an expert in hair barrettes, did Goody always mark their barrettes? Because these look so much like the Goody, but I don't know. So I just put unmarked, unsigned. They are the stay tight. You can see that little oval, which means this little clip clips into that and it holds the hair tight. And if you put stay tight in your title, that helps people find the item. Now, the ones that sell for the best and biggest money are the ones that are the tortoise shell, faux tortoise shell look, and they are by Goody. Those can go for a lot of money. And I recently just got some more. So I'm going to be listing some of those in the near future. But I picked these up at uh, a garage sale for 50 cents. And I sold them for $46.50 plus shipping. This came from the Goodwill bins. I took a chance on these. I'm not a big remote control manuals person. Uh, but... I know that they do sometimes sell, and these were like in a Ziploc bag at the Goodwill bins with the manual and the actual remote, and I'm like, hmm, I think maybe I should grab these. So I listed this. It sold pretty quickly for $46.50 plus shipping. It's a vintage Magnavox CDB473 CD compact disc player remote instructions and manual. Now, I think having both definitely helped increase the price. I also think this is a vintage item, so it's a little bit harder to find this remote control, especially with the manual. I did show that the battery compartment was clean. You can also show that the item lights up and is in working order. Obviously, I don't have what it goes with to check it, but I can at least show that it lights up. So I did do that, and this was definitely a nice bolo. This is a vintage Milton Bradley good old days puzzle, 500 pieces. I've sold a few of these. I did end up taking a best offer of $65 plus shipping. I picked this up at an estate sale for a dollar and you can see this retailed for $1.79. Talk about, wow. Here is not my bolo. Well, it's kind of my bolo, but not really. This is a vintage Santo Domenico Santo Domenico shell necklace, stone chip inlays, signed, graduated choker. I sold this on whatnot. So I started, I start most of my jewelry at $5, anywhere from a dollar to $5. Uh, pieces like this are going to start at five. So you can see this is a beautiful shell piece and it is just, it's a stunning piece. But look right here at the detail right here. It is beautiful. But the gal that bought this, she knows her stuff and nobody else bid against her. This sold for $5, $5. Um, with tax and shipping, she was all in for $7 and 48 cents. And she took a best offer on this necklace of $82. So after fees and cost of goods, her profit was $63 and 82 cents. So can you source on whatnot? Yes, absolutely. Can you source from me? 
sure. Yeah, come on over. Uh, I am not researching the jewelry, especially things like this that have no markings, no tags. I don't know jewelry that well. I'm not great at it. Now, if it's a brooch and it's signed, I might Google lens it and list some of those items on eBay just to try to make back some of my money because I'm making large purchases and I'm selling the items on whatnot starting anywhere from a dollar to five dollars. And sometimes they only go for that. So I do pull a few things, not much. I have really been slacking on eBay. I need to really put my head down and list on eBay because um, I'm seeing it in my sales that, that I'm not listing. So that is one thing that I can tell you guys. I am doing whatnot and my sales on eBay have taken a dip, but it is also that time of year where it's summer slowdown and everything slows down. My YouTube views slow down. Everything slows down in the summer. So, um, but yeah, most of my jewelry, I would say 99% of my jewelry is going to whatnot, but I will, you will see some items in here that I did pull and put on eBay just to kind of recoup some of that money just in case, because like this sold for $5. So um, I'm really, really happy for her. She is awesome and deserves this awesome sale. So if you guys want to come over to Whatnot, I am selling there. I'm doing mostly jewelry, but I have done other things. My link is down below. You can get $15 to shop with my referral link. And I have some exciting news coming in the near future, but um, I don't want to spoil it just yet because I don't have it in my hand to show you guys. So stay tuned. But that will be a whatnot exclusive. So go down there, get your $15 to shop and um, join. Come hang out. Even if you don't buy anything from me, you can use that $15 with anyone. All right. So let's go on to the next one. This was just so good. I had to share it because I'm guessing most of you like me had no idea this was a bolo. So this one is a Givenchy vintage logo brooch skeleton key. I did list this on eBay. The reason being is that it was easy to identify. I was able to use um, Google search. I checked it that way. I also was able to type, it, type in the logo, the brand, what it looked like, and I found comparables. This one was super easy to search. Now, there were not a whole lot like this. I did use WorthPoint also. Uh, WorthPoint goes back further than, uh, I think, is Terapeak two years? I think Terapeak is two years. WorthPoint, I don't know how many years it goes back, but for vintage and harder to find items like this, WorthPoint is definitely a great tool. Now, WorthPoint is kind of pricey, but it is worth it. It took me a long time to get it, but I love it. So this brooch, I ended up taking a best offer of $70 plus shipping. Could I have gotten more if I was patient? Absolutely. But um, I just wanted to move it. The next item are these trend scratch and sniff stickers. My husband, I believe these are the ones my husband brought home to me. Yeah. Yes, because these are the full sheets. So my husband will source like jewelry and different things for me. He helps me source for whatnot. And this was one of the things he sourced because he remembered me saying scratch and sniff stickers. <laughs> He's like, I got you something. And it was sitting out on the washer and dryer. And I'm like, oh, it was two full packs of scratch and sniff stickers. So I parted them out and I'm selling them by the sheet. I'm like, are you kidding me? Anyway, I was super, super excited. I sold this one sheet. Actually, I think it's two sheets. Somebody asked me to bundle. I'm sorry. It's two sheets. So it's the penguins and the cat. So I listed them and somebody said, can you create a, a, a two listings in one because it was an international sale? So I sold the two sheets for $110 plus shipping. The next item is this Motown, the life and music of legendary Bassett James book and two cassettes, new old stock. This came from, I believe, an estate sale. I almost donated this, but I'm like, you know what? It's sealed. It's new old stock. I'm just going to list it. I sold this for $62 plus shipping. I'm glad I listed it. Um, let's see. This is a vintage Walk Lively Barbie Miss America black label tag dress with eyelashes. What does that mean? It means that she has eyelashes. 
It also means that the tag of the dress is a black label tag. If you can find tags that look like this, definitely look them up. A lot of them can be worth big money. Here's the dress that she has on. This came out of a uh, mystery box. It was actually not a mystery box. This was actually a toy box that I purchased. No, I didn't even purchase it. I'm messing this all up. Noelle, Farm Girl Scavenger Noelle purchased it from me from Donatella Bottolino. So we were all over at Donatella's YouTube auction and she was showing this lot of dolls. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of them had chewed up legs. It was a hot mess. I think she got it out of a storage unit or something. And we are all just cracking up over this. But Noelle knows the value of these items. I placed like a bid to get it started. And I was going to go up to, I think, 25 bucks or something like that. And then I stopped. And Noelle and somebody else were bidding back and forth against each other. Anyway, Noelle won it and she gifted it to me. And I have made so much money on this box. Go check out the entire video. Oh, my goodness. And uh, Donatella is now selling on Whatnot. Noelle, Farm Girl Scavenger, is also selling on Whatnot. So check them out over there. And uh, check out their YouTube channels as well. I will link them down below. But anyway, this doll, I ended up selling her for $50 plus shipping. The next item is this Halloween mask from 2009. It is a take one zombie monster with arms, legs, and full head. He's retired and he is weird, weird, weird. Um, I got this out of a Halloween mystery box from a thrift store. And I sold this for... $40.30 and the buyer paid shipping. And the buyer was Pinky's secondhand store. She is a viewer of the channel who always pops in and buys from me every month. So kind of her. She usually buys the items and then she will relist them in her eBay store. She just does it to support the channel and to support me. And it's so, so kind of her. And I, I just, I'm just overwhelmed with I, I just can't believe she does it. So it's very, very kind. So this is her store. Definitely check her out. Look at these chalkware fish. She has amazing, amazing items in her store. And that's just page one. So go give her a follow. I'm going to link her down below. You guys save her as a seller and show her some love with a follow and check out some of her items. This is a Carter's Monsters Alien Green Teal Plush Orange Horn Stuffed Animal from 2015. I got this at the Goodwill bins and I ended up selling it for $46.50 plus shipping. This one was a nice surprise. Um, some carters can do really well. This, um, okay, so there's two ties here. Now, individually, they were not a bolo, but together, the buyer paid $55.78 for two vintage ties. I'm going to tell you my keywords are not good. These probably would have sold better with some fabulous keywords. This is the brand of this one. But look how cool this tie is. These were super long tail also. Like vintage men's tie multicolor. That's awful, Courtney. What are you doing? Like I could have put like a geometric wave or something. I don't know. Something fun in the title. Tell me in the comments what keywords would you have used for this tie? So anyway, the two ties together sold for $55.78 plus shipping. Here is another brooch. Now, the reason I put this on eBay and I did not bring it to whatnot was because, number one, it was really, really delicate. And a lot of the things that I sell on whatnot, I am selling multiple items to the same person, which means they're all shipping in the same box. So this would have taken some extra care to package and ship if it was sh shipping in a bundle. And I didn't want it to get broken. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to look it up. I looked it up. I was able to identify the maker's mark and I found out that it was a bolo. And I'm glad I looked it up. But here's the deal. If I would have brought this to whatnot, I don't know that anybody else would have known the value because it's not a common um, brand. And I may have only sold this brooch for $5. And, you know, that's the chance. I so for those of you that are wondering, like, what's what not like? Is it worth it? You know, it it's quick money. Could I make more selling my items on a platform? Yes. But I am going to have to list each individual items. There's nights that I go on whatnot and I can sell 100 items in five hours. A hundred items in five hours. 
but I'm not making a ton of money. Like at the end of the show, if you divide out a hundred items by what I made, you know, it's like, oh man, ouch. But if you look at the big picture, I, I worked five hours. I sold this much. I flipped it quick. It's just a different mentality. And as I grow, I'm sure that things will change and um, get better. But uh, for now, I mean, I'm very, very happy with how things are going. But again, if I would have brought this brooch to whatnot, it probably would have went anywhere from five to twenty five dollars if I was lucky. But I sold it on eBay for seventy five dollars plus shipping. So I don't know. It's tough, you guys. I know I'm giving a lot of really great stuff away on whatnot, but I've got a lot of return customers. I think people are buying things from me and reselling them, which I'm completely fine with. Um, I expect that. I have a reseller channel and I'm inviting everybody to come and check out my whatnot. So I expect resellers to buy the items and resell them. I want you guys to. Um, I do also believe that people are buying things for personal use. And I'm also growing organically just from people that are whatnot buyers. So if you want to know more about whatnot, you can put your comments, questions down below. Happy to answer them. Uh, it, is it hard to grow? Yeah, it is. Um, I have a big following on YouTube and I usually have anywhere from probably 30 to 50 people in my watching at one time. So yeah, it's hard. It is definitely hard, but it can be done just with time and work and effort, just like anything else. My eBay store did not have 7,000 listings overnight. I had to work the business. So I worked my YouTube business. And because I worked my YouTube, it has benefited me over on whatnot. And I am so thankful for that. And I'm thankful for everybody that has come over and um, supported me on whatnot. Thank you so much. So if you want to check out whatnot, again, there's a link down below. You can get $15 to shop. And I hope to see you at one of my shows. Even if you don't buy, just come hang out. So Celia Paris brooch, signed purple flower, discontinued, hard to find. I lucked out on this one. I'll tell you that. So it, it's a pretty cool brooch. All right. This one is vintage Aunt Martha's embroidery craft patterns, hot iron transfers, a lot of 24. I got these at an estate sale and I sold this for $46.50 plus shipping. Now, I also had a whatnot show where I did vintage uh, um, items and I had a bunch of these and I sold them on whatnot and I sold them way, way cheaper on whatnot. I sold them to a reseller. I think, I think it was the same person that bought that necklace actually. And yeah, so she's probably going to part them out. But yeah, I sold 24 for 46.50. I did not sell them for that much on whatnot. So, <laughs> all right, the, here's another one. This is Miriam Has Haskell. And um, I was going through a bunch of jewelry I got and it was kind of a dud box. I'm not gonna lie. Um, sometimes it happens. Sometimes, you know, you source things and it's just not that good. But this brooch was in there and I'm like, oh my goodness, I am totally gonna take a loss. Um, so I looked this brooch up. This is another one that I had to go over to worth point to get comps for. And I ended up selling this for, I, I had it on auction for $129.99 and somebody sent me a best offer of 120 and I went ahead and took it. So I sold it for $120 plus shipping. So it ended up being fine. It all worked out. But everything that was in it was like missing pieces, missing parts, broken. It was just damaged, damaged, damaged. And this one was in there. And I'm like, oh, because I had heard of Miriam Haskell. I think uh, Farm Girl Scavenger Noel is who I had heard about that brand from. But, you know, when they're signed like this, you definitely want to look signed items up, you guys. The next item is this 1939 New York World World's Fair Polish Week Commemorative Souvenir Program. And I got this from a mystery box from Donatella Bottolino. It was gifted to me from Christopher. Amazing Steals and Deals is his eBay store. And I'm going to link him down below his eBay store. Definitely go and give him a follow. But yeah, he purchased a mystery box and had her send it to me. 
And I have another one that is supposed to be coming that he bought me a while back that she's been building for me. So I will be probably be doing an unboxing on that in the near future as well. So stay tuned for that. This did have some water damage. I ended up selling it for $49.60 plus shipping. Uh, VTech Go Go Smart Wheels Vehicle Car Lot of 24 was sound. Oh, and real quick, I do have an unboxing of this. If you guys like those types of videos, I unbox everything that she sent me in the dibble box. It's called a dibble bit of this and a dibble bit of that. Uh, mystery box of just a bunch of things. And I unbox it and show you guys everything that I got. I pop up screenshots of how I listed everything to keep it educational for you. And definitely check that out. And again, Christopher, if you're watching, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Amazing steals and deals. He is one of the biggest Bolo finders ever. Uh, check out his eBay store for real. And I also featured his eBay store. So you can type in Bolo Buddies, amazing steals and deals. And you can see that video as well. I picked these up at the Goodwill bins, these uh, Go Go Smart Wheels. They took forever to sell. Uh, I probably shouldn't have made such a big lot because the shipping was kind of heavy, kind of high. Um, I ended up selling them for my asking price of $81.25 plus shipping. And I got them at the Goodwill bins. So kind of heavy. I may have had $10 or $15 and I'm not 100% sure what the weight was. But they sold and they were a bolo. This is an antique Victorian filigree frame beaded purse. You guys may have seen me um, talk about this in a another video. When I sold it, I was doing like a reseller vlog and we talked about this. This came from the white elephant and there's a whole story behind this, but my husband got together some stuff from our house and he took it to his mom's for a white elephant party. And my sister-in-law got this. And I'm looking at it in shock, like, oh my goodness. I'm like, do you want that? Are you, are, are you going to keep that or are you going to throw that away? Like, can I have that back? <laughs> and I got it back from her. Like, she probably was going to throw it away. And I'm like, it's beautiful. They're like, ah, I cannot believe this is here. So anyway, watch my white elephant video. I think it's called The Strangest Place I've Ever Sourced. Oh my goodness. You guys, I've sold quite a few things from that. Anyhow, I ended up selling this for $50 and the buyer paid shipping. A white elephant party. This is Carter's My First Doll Rattle Plush Black Hair Pink Heart White Floral Pigtails with a bow. Um, I got her at a garage sale for 50 cents. Took a best offer of 45 plus shipping. She is Carter's. Carter's does sell. Uh, so especially the My First Dolls. There's certain ones that do really well. So stay tuned. This is a vintage Irwin Dollhouse MCM. Huge mix lot. Furniture table. TV sink. Wall hangings. I got this at the Goodwill bins in a huge bag of this stuff. And I was just going to sell it all together. And I thought, you know what? You need to take the time to part this out. And I did. So I made small bundles. Uh, this is the second or third lot that I've sold. I sold this for $93 plus shipping. This is a fantastic lot. I probably could have parted this out and made more money, um, but I wanted to do it as a set. Now, the gal that bought it is Pinky's secondhand store. So I don't know if she's going to part it out or if she's going to sell it as she got it. So um, if you're watching, let us know how you're going to list that. All right. This is a vintage 1990 Texas Instruments Talking Peekaboo Zoe, Zoe Zoo Interactive uh, toy. It's and it works. I got this at the Goodwill bins, and I can't remember. I think I paid by weight on this, so it was kind of heavy. It was tested and working, and I ended up selling this for sixty-two dollars plus shipping. All right, you guys, I have one big money bolo after this one, but I have a story for you about this. Um, the one after this is really good, though, so stay tuned. This is a vintage Trafari Alfred Felipe circle brooch, blue and visibly set, rare and damaged. It is missing a rhinestone here and a rhinestone here. This is a very hard to find brooch. I looked it up because it said, 
uh, Trafari on the back. Now, I did see a lot that were green, and I think I saw a red, but I didn't see blue. Um, I also looked on Worth Point, and if this would have been in mint perfect condition, some of these go for over a thousand dollars. Some some of them even thousands. This again is a very hard to find brooch, but it's damaged. So, what would you have done? Would you have listed it? I'm like, you know what? I'm going to list it. I'm going to start it high. And I started the auction. I can't remember what I did the first auction at. Maybe I think I did $899.99. I got a $450 offer. I declined it. I got a $400 offer. I declined it. I got both of those back to back. So I'm like, ooh, I've got something good here. Because usually if you get a $450 offer, it's a reseller who's going to flip it for more. So I declined it. I relisted it on auction and I lowered the price, I think to $5.99. I got a $200 offer that round. That is it. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I messed up. I should have taken the $450. And I was kind of stressed out about it. I'm like, I really thought it was worth more, you know, because I could, there's like this blue color is so hard to find, but you do have to find these, you know, replacement parts. Somebody probably bought this and they are probably going to find those two pieces and sell this for huge money. And that's okay with me. I don't have the patience to try to find these stones or whatever they are. I don't even know how I would go about doing that. So that somebody else can do that. I relisted it for $1,000, put it on sale at 38% off. So that took it down to $620. I went to bed and I woke up to a $500 offer and I took it just like that. So I sold this for $500 and the buyer paid shipping. So can you sell broken items? Can you sell items that are missing parts and pieces or rhinestones and stuff like that? Yes. Now I sell vintage brooches all the time on whatnot and they'll be really old brooches and they'll go for decent money. I think they're going for decent money for me. But now that I've sold something like this, I'm like, oh my goodness, they're going to fix those brooches and sell them for crazy money. You know, it's just unbelievable. I just don't know the jewelry market. I really don't. Um, after researching this, it's like really, really opened my eyes to just how much some jewelry can go for. I mean, I did the big money brooches video and I definitely learned a lot from that. But, you know, those items are really hard to find. But there are a lot of people that know their jewelry. And in that brooch video, I talked about unsigned jewelry. Uh, one of them that I hear people talk about all the time that's unsigned is Juliana, I think is how you say it. And there's like different ways to know if it's a Juliana. If you know, you know, and if you don't, you don't. So um, if things are marked, I, I can look them up. I can use Google Lens, but I really honestly, I don't have tons of time. That's kind of my problem here with everything that I'm trying to do. So it's easier for me to just bring the items to whatnot. So that's typically what I do. Um but I do have to list on eBay and stay current in the algorithm. So those were the items that I pulled to, uh, to list. And I did very well with them. Now, would I have sold them for this much on whatnot? No way. No way. But, um, and I'm sure that's what tons of my jewelry is happening. Like I'm selling it way cheap. Somebody the other day, um, it was flipping hot finds. She bought something off of me and, um, She's like, I bought a brooch from you. And she said it was a certain brand. And she knew that it was that brand by the clasp. Um, it was an early piece that wasn't signed. And she could tell by, um, I think, how the clasp connected. I don't know. It was something weird. She was trying to explain it to me. So I knew what to look for. And I'm like, I just can't keep track of all that. So anyway, she's got that listed and hopefully it's going to be a big money bolo for her. But I, I had no idea. You know, I'm just showing the stuff that I am sourcing and finding and I'm bringing it to whatnot. So again, come check me out on whatnot. All right. The next item is this vintage heart to heart red beating heart. It's a replacement heartbeat. And this came out of a mystery box from Auctions for You. 
and she sells over on YouTube. She does auctions and she sells to resellers. I bought a vintage toy box from her and this was inside of one of the dolls. I took it out of the doll and I sold this heart and it has a heartbeat when you push the button. I sold it for $45.50 plus shipping. So this is a replacement part. This is a broken brooch. So you guys can see, like, I sell a lot of things uh, broken. Again, a lot of broken things. And they can still, this one has water damage. These items will still sell even if they have issues. So definitely be on the lookout. This guy is not in perfect condition. You can see he has been loved on. That's a plush. Trying to think if there was anything else that was broken in here. I think everything else was pretty good. Yeah. Yep. Well, this is parts. This is for parts, replacement parts. So yes, a lot of items can be big money that have issues. So don't dismiss them just because they have an issue. Which item surprised you the most? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And come check me out on Whatnot. It's linked down below. Thanks for watching.